Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to episode 60 of the podcast. And this episode is all about quilting gratitude into your life or into your quilts. And this is gonna be a quilt story. And I'm gonna tell you all about a quilt I made called My Cup Runneth Over. And just a little reminder, you can see video of all the podcasts that I made, as well as the audio. So if you're listening and you'd like to see me holding up the quilt and talking about it, then come and check out the video. You can also find lots of beautiful images of the quilt, nice close-ups at leahday.com slash gratitude. So that's what the topic's gonna be about, and I can't wait to tell you this quilt story and share more about what this goddess quilt means to me. Uh, and this has really been a very fun experience. I've already uh, shot that part of the video, so I can just say that um, this just feels like the absolute right direction for me to be moving in, uh, and it has been a goal for quite some time, uh, and it just feels really amazing. So I hope that you enjoy this podcast episode and I'm going to keep the introduction just a little short so we can get right into that. So really quick updates around the house. We have a new calendar. <laughs> so the 365 Free Motion Quilting Designs calendar is out and ready for you to pre-order. We're going to be shipping these on or around July 10th. So if you place the order now, it will not be shipping immediately. It will be shipping on or around, hopefully before, but we're just gonna go on ahead and say July 10th. Uh, so what it is, is it is a, um, a perpetual calendar, which means that you just have the day of the month, like May 5th or June 7th, you don't have the day of the week. So you can use this calendar year after year after year. And on each day, you get a little stitched out square that uh, from the original 365 Free Motion Quilting Designs project, my blog project. Uh, so you get to see that Free Motion Quilting Design and sometimes you'll get like a little quilting tip, something like that. Uh, and it's something that you can use year after year to inspire you to get on your machine and give some free motion quilting a try. So if you'd like to check this out and pre-order a copy for yourself, come and check it out at leahday.com slash 365 calendar. That's where you can find it. I'm super excited about this. This is really fun because, uh, you know, I published 365 free mission quilting designs myself. And then uh, after a couple print runs, I decided, you know what? I really like to see this book in quilt shops more. So I handed it over to CNT Publishing. And then now this calendar, you know, really they put this together. And so it's been kind of fun. It's, I almost feel like, um, uh, a regular author <laughs> that that has books like magically come out and didn't have to go and shoot loads of photos and didn't have to go do the layout herself. So that feels really amazing. And I'm really excited about this. I can't wait to have this on my desk and be able to enjoy it. And I'm sure it's going to inspire even more free motion quilting designs to be shared on the blog too. So that's the major update for this week. You might be wondering what I'm working on. I am crocheting. I'm playing around with some free form crochet, which is really a challenge for me. My brain doesn't really work all that well in free form shapes. I really like symmetry, but this has been a project that I've been working on for quite some time. And you basically make kind of little, you know, granny squares or medallion kind of shapes. And then when they start to get big enough, then you can combine them together to make something like a scarf or a sweater or a jacket. So I'm planning on making a sweater jacket to enjoy this coming fall. So that's my, <laughs> that's how much time I'm giving myself to get this finished up. And uh, what's really nice about it is I can do the crochet while I'm working on editing Mally the Maker. So Mally the Maker is the fiction novel that I'm working on, and that is going to be completely self-published. Uh, and that is coming out later this summer, maybe this fall. And I'm still working through the editing. And what I've done basically is uploaded the book into an app called Natural Reader that will read it for me. Now it's a robotic voice. It's not the best voice in the world, but uh, it's still close enough that I can get into the story of the book and kind of lose myself in the story of the book 
and in the back of my mind also be editing and listening and, you know, oh, Mally needs to say an extra line right there. Or, you know, that character needs to do something slightly different or, wow, I have said that particular word like seven times in one sentence. I maybe need to edit that. <laughs> so yeah, and that is working out really well as a form of editing for me because you know, I, that's how I listen to fiction. I listen to books. I listen to podcasts. Um, and that's, and I'm usually doing something else. So my hands are busy and then I'm, I'm listening with half my brain on the book. And, and I wanted to edit that way from the very beginning because I knew that's how I would catch those little things that bug me when I'm listening to a book. And I, I am planning on coming out with an audio book version of Mally the Maker. It might not be out you know, immediately, it might not be out right when the book is published, but I'm planning on recording that myself too. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. And uh, I'm really excited about where it's going. And then already starting to talk about, well, Josh and I are debating. <laughs> We're having these like massive debates in the kitchen about book two, uh, you know, what should happen? Who should be the villain? You know, uh, what goes down? Who dies? <laughs> I know it sounds crazy. This is a quilting book, you know, about a 10 year old little girl, but yeah, characters are going to die and, you know, their stakes, you know, this is an important thing. The, you know, world of creativity is on the line. So a few little hints and sneak peeks there. So I am having a blast and I'm loving the freeform crochet because it feels like this is challenging my brain in a way and keeping me focused, which also I'm, I, I don't know why, but that's helping me also focus in on the book and listen and catch those little things. So that feels like the best way to edit, at least for me. So there's a few little sneak peeks to be looking forward to whenever the book comes out. Now, one more update for this week. We have started the Eternal Love Quilt Along, and this is a mother and child goddess quilt that we are going to fuse and quilt together. So the very first post went up today and you can find it at leahday.com slash applique because that's what we're doing. We're cutting out all of our applique shapes. We're fusing the, the fusible web to the fabric and cutting out everything. So next week we can be constructing this goddess. We're gonna get the whole top ready to go next week. So this is gonna move really quickly. It really is a mini quilt along, perfect for the summer, and you can join in anytime and work at your own pace. So you can pick up the copy of the pattern for eternal love at leahday.com slash eternal love. And that's all you need in order to get started and quilt along with us. So I hope that you'll check that out and join in the fun of the eternal love quilt along. And I hope that you also enjoy this episode all about quilting gratitude in your life with my cup runneth over. Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day and welcome to episode 60 of the podcast. So this part of the podcast is gonna be all about one quilt. And that quilt is My Cup Runneth Over. And it's a goddess quilt. You can come and check out a picture at leahday.com slash gratitude because that's what this quilt is all about. Uh, My Cup Runneth Over, the words, the, the name of the quilt, uh, was really inspired by um, my own desire to feel gratitude and to feel very thankful for my life. And I really want to tell you this whole story because there's reasons that we make our quilts. You know, there's emotion that goes into this. And our quilts have the ability to change our lives. I have had my life changed multiple times over <laughs> by the quilts that I've created. Uh, and in sharing this story, I want to encourage you to make something that means even more and to go there uh, and to feel not only that you can, but and that's, uh, and that's a good thing to do, uh, but also that you can tell that story. And this is a little challenging. I've never done this before. I've shared um, a goddess lecture of all of my goddess quilts one time. And... Uh, and then I know I want to write a book, basically, of all of these stories. And so sharing these, um, these stories as um, part of the podcast is kind of meant to be the first step in that journey. Uh, and it does feel a little scary. <laughs> Maybe I should have started with my quilt about fear first, but uh, 
I, I think this is a great place to start because uh, this is definitely what I'm tapping into. Gratitude is really an emotion that I'm tapping into a lot lately. Uh, and I think this is a great quilt to start with, mostly because she is just really so beautiful. So a little description, just in case you are listening to the podcast and not watching the video. Uh, I, this is a very simple goddess quilt. She is um, has a very um, simple body in purple fabric, uh, but she's surrounded by a pretty complicated fusible applique water area. And what's interesting is that the water area is very curvy. And a lot of times when people look at this quilt, they see a bird in the middle of this quilt. And I used lots of different batik fabrics in blue so that the color goes from very light blue uh, right in the center of the goddess's heart uh, out to a much darker blue towards the outer edges. She has teal colored hair and that's kind of flowing off into the background. And uh, she is holding a cup, but it's kind of slightly covered by the water section. She is holding a cup at her chest and uh, the quilting is very dense. This is, a, this is definitely a wall hanging style quilt and it's about, I'd say it's around 30 inches by 36 inches or so. It's a, it's a relatively medium sized wall hanging. And then the quilting is very densely quilted and I have swirling water and a landscape stitch. Uh, this is snake paisley in the background as well as uh, left turn, right turn, which is one of my favorite designs. Uh, it creates kind of a boxy blocky grid. I, and then I use tree roots in her body, a little bit of pebbling, and then uh, heart paisley in her face. So lots of different designs. You can see close-up images and uh, of course close-up images here in the video too. So you can really see lots of detail that I've shot a new series of images so that you can really get a good look of not only the goddess quilt but also all of the stitching as well. Uh, and I'm going to talk more about those decisions and how she was constructed and how she was put together uh, in the construction part of this uh, episode. So first thing I want to talk about is why I made her. So why my cup runneth over? Why this goddess design? Why did these shapes come together in this way? Well, uh, this was 2010, uh, so a little bit of explaining the quilt and the construction and why I made her is also understanding what was going on in my life because, you know, we can make a quilt at any time, but really the reason why something unique and individual comes up is because of whatever is going on in our lives at that particular time. So 2010 was a pretty challenging year. <laughs> And I was busy with so many different things. So um, I had just started my business less than a year before. And so was really still very much learning how to balance running a business and working online. And James was maybe just had turned three. So he was still very little and was starting to get more independent, but still was not super independent, you know, um, still very much a toddler. And uh, so there was a lot of challenges and, and a kind of a juggling act going on. And I was still sharing the original 365 free motion quilting design. So that's pretty much what my blog was all about. It was just sharing free motion quilting designs uh, and then trying to figure out a way of <laughs> running a business on top of all of that. And this was before I had any help. So Josh was still working uh, for his dad and my dad was not even living anywhere close by, you know, uh, so it was kind of, uh, it was very much me by myself all alone. But the funny thing about it is, is I actually wasn't spending nearly as much time on the business because I was working still so much on my own personal projects. I was taking that extra time that I had during the day or in the evening and making goddess calls. Uh, and that had become my focus. And so I actually had two different quilts going on at the time. I was working on a really big quilt called Shadow Self, and I'll do another episode on that video, on that quilt. Uh, and that quilt was hard. It was hard emotionally. I was working through a lot of personal stuff. It was heavy. You know, uh, I loved the design. It was, it was so much fun to dig into the design and play with that, but it was really emotionally taxing. Uh, and I can remember 
a day that I was just feeling so bogged down. You know, I just felt like I had a million things to do. I needed to go shoot new videos. I needed to go work on that design. I needed to go, you know, figure out the fabrics I was gonna use for Shadow Self. Uh, you know, James was in the house and, you know, kind of doing his thing and Josh was busy and, you know, it was kind of all of those things. And I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was pretty late at night. I was in kind of this bad habit of staying up late and not sleeping very much, you know, these days, I get a lot of sleep, <laughs> but I have gone through periods in my life where I have insomnia and struggle with uh, getting enough sleep, and really not a lot of good stuff ends up usually happening out of that. Uh, and so, you know, I was feeling bogged down by all of those things, but at the same time, I was also kind of like, well, what else would I rather be doing? You know, what what other life is there for me? This is what I want to do. And uh, and I had been immensely surprised and um, just, just really overwhelmed by the response of the Free Mission Quilting Project when I started that blog uh, and, you know, was able basically to you know, build my business in a matter of uh, months and, you know, start making sales, which started giving us extra money, which started to kind of um, just make things feel a lot easier because when we had purchased our house, it was kind of like just everything was just so tight. <laughs> and then especially we bought my house, bought the house whenever I was pregnant with James. So it was just everything felt so tight and so on the edge and, uh, and, and just difficult, you know, like I can remember at the time Josh wrote an article for a magazine. It, it was about fish. His hobby is, is fish and, and keeping tanks. And that article was like, oh my gosh, yay, I can pay all the bills, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So everything was very tight and stressful. And I felt a lot of pressure to get the business running and, and get it profitable very quickly because you know, the idea was Josh was going to start working with me too, and that, you know, we would then build the business together, which eventually did work out. But in 2010, that was all very much a pipe dream. And, you know, this is like spring 2010. This is all very much a pipe dream. I did not know how things were going down. Uh, and it was, it was scary. You know, it was really, really scary. But I can remember that that evening, I, uh, I was kind of, you know, kind of rushing around and doing all these different things and, and, and trying to clean up the studio. And, um, and I think I just stopped and I was like, no, this is, I'm really, really lucky. You know, I, I might feel frazzled and things might feel tight and this might be really challenging and hard, you know, and, you know, gosh, I could really use a day off, but I really don't want to be doing anything else. You know, this is the life that I wanted. This is the life that I built. And gosh, I've got this amazing little baby and he's so awesome. And I've got this awesome husband and he's so supportive. And yeah, just kind of stopped for a second and tapped into that. And that's when she popped in my head. So some of my goddess quilts have done this. They have popped in my head fully formed so that I saw that shape almost exactly the way I wanted it. And I just see that image. I see a powerful woman figure holding a cup and water flowing out of it. And those words, my cup runneth over, like, oh my gosh, I have more than enough. I might feel frazzled and life might feel challenging, but I really have so much. I have more than enough, and I'm so thankful for all that I have. This is an amazing life, and I have the, both the challenge and the joy of being able to live it. So this was one of those quotes that just popped into my head, fully formed, and I don't think I immediately sat down and started drawing it. You know, this was eight years ago, so I don't exactly remember that process, but I'm pretty sure within a few days, I sat down and started sketching. And at this time, I was kind of in a transition with my design process, and we get into the construction of the quilt now, because 
this has really flowed. This has really changed over the years. And this is the really fun thing to share because I want you to see that how you make a quilt today, you might be making a quilt completely different in two years or five years or 10 years. And your process needs to evolve uh, not only to be faster and easier, but also just simply because, you know, you want to be able to take that image that you see and make it as as close to what's in your head as possible to make the finished quilt as close to possible as what's in your head. And it was actually challenging with this goddess quilt. So at some point I sat down and I sketched a little sketch and it was uh, just on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. You know, this is kind of drawing in miniature. And this was new, I'd never done this before. All of the goddess quilts I had designed up until this time, I had drawn full size. Meaning if that's an 80 inch quilt, then I'm taping together big pieces of graph paper <laughs> to measure 80 inches, which is outrageous. I've got to say, that's why I transitioned away from that whole method because it was just too big and too complicated. And I ended up with all these big giant pieces of paper um, and I'd roll them up, but even still, they still took up a lot of space. So I, uh, I was trying out this new idea. Okay, I'm gonna draw this quilt onto a, a, into a small size. And so that's gonna be the size that I'm just gonna get the drawing looking nice. And then I'll scan the image and blow it up and expand it just using like paint or, you know, at the time I was starting to play with graphic design a little bit with a little rinky dink program that I got for, you know, 70 bucks. It was, it was cheap, but it, it did the job for years. Uh, so I had this idea and I was going to try this new design method. So that's what I, how I made it, I drew that design out, got it where I was happy with it completely. And that's a lot of redrafts. So I would draw the design and then use a light box and be like, okay, I want to tweak those lines a little bit, play with it a little bit, you know, tweak the lines, draw it again. You know, there was, so there was a lot of erasing and, and drafting in that process. And that's still the way I like to do it. You know, I still like pencil on paper because that just helps me feel like I'm in control over it and I can um, get exactly what I'm wanting on paper first. So then I scanned the image, got it into the computer, blew it up, and printed out lots of sheets. And that was how I uh, started with the original design. But I had a little bit of trouble because I couldn't, she wasn't quite the right size. Uh, initially, she was, she seemed too big. And I think I had expanded just a little bit bigger than what I really wanted, what felt right. And so I had to kind of play with that a little bit. And then I ended up taking that uh, big drawing and actually changing it on the big paper. So she ended up still being a little bit different in a, and redrafted slightly on that big sheet of paper. So it was just, it was still a kind of a learning process of that new technique of drawing and, and designing. Uh, and I was still very much in that transition. So around this time, what was I looking at? I was really looking at different methods to construct my quilts. So I had painted a whole cloth quilt and turned that into really your light. Uh, I had done another form of applique I call freezer paper applique to construct shadow self. And then, you know, that had felt really time consuming and this had lots of tiny itsy bitsy little pieces in it and I could not imagine piecing them. So I thought, okay, let's try fusible applique. And I'm not sure if I found Robbie Eklo's book at that time or it was a little bit afterwards, but I seem to remember that her book played a part of that. And that's uh, Robbie uh, Eklo's book, uh, Free Form Applique. I'll make sure to link it up if I have the name wrong, but it's a beautiful, beautiful book done in uh, Robbie's beautiful uh, hand dyed fabrics. And that was just really inspiring to me. So I believe that's why I chose Fusible Applique, but uh, I really didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was kind of guessing. And so I started constructing this water section and I didn't really have my overlaps right. I didn't really understand what I was doing. Uh, and yeah, it was a little bit of a mess. I'll be completely honest. I did try some piecing. I did a few like little experiments. And this section right here is super, super tiny little pieces. 
Uh, and I, you know, every time I would try out a technique, I'd start there at the hardest part just to see if it would work. So I scrapped multiple different uh, methods just simply because they did not work in that tightest area. So ended up going with fusible applique. I actually made a video super early in the morning of the technique that I was using. And I have to say, watch that, but watch it with a grain of salt because uh, I ended up not liking it as much as, you know, it could have worked. And the main reason is, is I left the edges raw. And I really don't like raw edge applique. It, it doesn't work for me. And so I started struggling with the feeling of, I don't like this. This is challenging. This feels really hard. It's starting to fray. It's not giving me the look that I want. And this is when she started being a little bit of a problem child. Um... So, you know, there's times that you just have to kind of keep plowing through it and keep going and, and push yourself uh, out of that rut. And that was certainly the situation where it was just like, all right, well, this is the method that you're using. You got to keep going with it. Uh, by the time I reached the outer edges of the applique, I started figuring out, okay, I need to leave a little bit more extra fabric you know, behind these pieces so that way they overlap a little bit better. So that way when they fray, they don't make a mess and leave like gaps in the fabric where you could see the background running through it, that kind of stuff. Uh, and, you know, I have to admit, I am very um, particular and you would call it anal. <laughs> I'm very particular when it comes to these quilts. I want a very specific look and particularly during this time of my life, I needed it to be perfect and not, not in a, you know, oh, it'd be nice if it would be perfect. No, it was a, it must be perfect. And a lot of that had to do with who I was and how I felt about myself at the time, where that quilt is a direct reflection on me. And if it's not perfect, that's just a reflection of how imperfect I am. And that was what I was struggling with. You know, rather than going into this with acceptance and love, which is what I what I now look at this quilt and I love it. I love the mistakes. I love the things that are messed up with it. I love the whole story of how it evolved. But at the time, I needed it to be perfect because that made me feel better. And so I tortured myself with it and beat myself up when it wasn't good enough, when it felt like it was not turning out the way I wanted it to be. And I think we can all do this. We can all run through patterns like this. Uh, and I'll certainly be getting into this more with other goddess stories. And that is how we talk to ourselves in our own minds is the most important thing that you can work on. Uh, and, and it's something that I've struggled with my whole life. And I know in particular with this one, you know, here I was trying to tap into this gratitude and this feeling of abundance and thankfulness, gratefulness for my family. But all I could do was beat myself up for all the ways that it wasn't turning out the way I had envisioned it. You know, had this attachment to this image in my head and I wanted it to be exactly that. But that's the thing about making a quilt. That's the thing about making anything. You have to accept and love the image in your head but also accept and love what your hands have the capability of producing. And it might not be, it might not be there. They might not match up and that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Love yourself and love the place that you're at and respect it because you will get better. It will improve. You have somewhere to grow always. You always have somewhere to grow and somewhere, you know, something else to learn. But it's also, if you want to make something amazing, you've got to accept where you are right this second. So plowed through it, <laughs> got the applique done, but then I kind of got a little stuck because I hadn't figured out, I left a question mark in this design. I had not figured out what I wanted in the background. And that's a dangerous thing to do. This is the thing that I have learned time and time and time again with these goddess quilts. With actually any quilt design, you cannot leave question marks. 
and it's so tempting. You get excited. Oh my gosh, look at that water section. <laughs> it's so cool, you know? <laughs> like, I'm so ready to make that. You know, like, I'm usually rushing off to go construct something. I don't really know how to construct, but I wanted to go do it so badly that, oh, you know, I'll worry about that background section later. I don't need to worry about that right this second, right? So, <laughs> of course, that's the section that will come back and bite you in the butt royally. Because if you leave a question mark in the quilt and then you're rocking and rolling through it, or even if you're plodding through it in an angry way, it doesn't matter, you're gonna hit that section that you did not know what to do with it and it's gonna just stop you in your tracks. And it's gonna be like, a full stop, gotta figure it out. And then now you're invested. Now they're stitching in it and there's judgment in it and there's emotion in it and there's even more tension and fear of what if I mess it up? What if I totally mess this up and screw it up and it ends up in the trash? You know, what if the next thing I do ruins this quilt? And this is the scary thing. I think this is the reason why so many quilters love to make patterns. You know, I love to write patterns because I love to figure things out and dig into it and, uh, and answer all of those questions for you. But I know that the answering of all of those questions is what makes a lot of quilters afraid because it's a lot of questions to answer. You know, how do those pieces go together? What size is it going to be? How are we going to quilt it? So I reached the stage and I'm pretty sure that I had her as one fusible applique piece and then it was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to put this on a background. So I had this piece of, of off-white, it's an off-white piece of fabric. And I just set it down and said, well, I mean, I don't really like that plain background, but I guess that's okay. And may, maybe I'll quilt something in that background to make it look okay. You know, maybe I'll, I'll fix it in the quilting. You know, there's a saying uh, that a lot of times people will, will uh, say, uh, oh, that'll quilt out. <laughs> there's actually a song from uh, Kathy Miller, the singing quilter, she has a song called, uh, oh, you can quilt that out, and it's hilarious. There's a music video, I think. I'll, I'll link it up so that way you can find it because it'll give you a chuckle. And I think that's what I was assuming. Oh, I'll figure out that background section at another time. You know, I'll figure out what's going on behind the quilt because that's a lot of the challenge is sometimes you'll have, you know, a dominant figure in a quilt and that's clearly your central focus, but then you'll end up, you can end up with lots and lots of background space. And this is what gets really boring to quilt. And I'm gonna say it straight. Quilting on a dense scale, where you have an eighth of an inch or less between your lines of quilting is boring. It's why I hardly do it anymore. I like to do it, but I like to do it like something this big, like six inches wide, you know? I don't have time to spend hours and hours and hours throwing thread at something. I love it, it's fun. I, I can get in a flow, like a meditative state while I'm doing it, but I just don't have time to do that for weeks and weeks, if not months and months on end, which is sometimes what larger wall hanging style quilts of this, uh, of this type can take, you know? So I started quilting it. And this is where she kind of became a problem child, even more so than she already had. I got started on it. I hated what I was doing. None of it was working. And I had gotten shadow self. I had transitioned with shadow self and really taken my time on that design. I was loving the applique process that I was doing on that with the freezer paper applique, which was actually technically a piecing technique. I was loving it and loving everything about it. That quilt was really working for me. It was helping me work through some emotional stuff that was going on at the time. So I was like, I think we need to put gratitude <laughs> to the side. Let's put my cup runneth over in a bin or in a closet or in a drawer and just put her away for a little while. And this will not be the first quilt or the last quilt that I ever put in jail and just say, or time out, whatever you wanna call it and just say, please go away for a little while. I can't think about you right now. You're in timeout. Uh, and that was really good. It was really good that I did that because I needed to go work on shadow self. During this time, my parents were getting a divorce and um, 
really that even though I was 27 years old, that was still very much rock in my world. My grandma who had lived, you know, was in, I could go see her pretty much anytime I wanted to, was moving to Texas. Uh, and then I was still in this, you know, crazy first year of business too. So it was just all of these things were combining. But what I really needed to work on was shadow self. And I'm so thankful that I took the time to make that quilt uh, because that quilt helped me overcome or at least start to identify and work on my inner negative voices. Those are the voices inside your head that tell you that you suck and you're ugly and you're not good enough. And hopefully you don't have one, but I had a major monster in my head. So I needed that break off of my cup runneth over to go work on shadow self. And I'm so very thankful for that because that quilt also changed my life completely. So I rocked and rolled on Shadow Self all summer long and I uh, finished up that quilt and I think in August that year, 2010, and then looked at my cup runneth over and all of a sudden all the issues that I had been freaking out about that seemed so huge and terrifying and oh my gosh, that'll never be right. And that background section is such a glaring mistake and I don't know what to do there. All that kind of stuff suddenly did not seem quite so terrifying anymore and didn't seem hard at all. It was like, okay, I need to come up with another plan. I need to answer that question and get that question mark out of this quilt. What am I doing in that background section you know, I also didn't like her hair. There were some issues with her hair. I really wanted her hair to be bigger and kind of be a, uh, a swirl to kind of counter the swirl of the, of the water. But that didn't work out. And so it was, I was coming back to my cup runneth over with acceptance and we're gonna rock it. Because that's what I came off of the end of Shadow South. I finished that quote and I was like, yeah. <laughs> You know that feeling like I aced this, that quilt. I'm still so proud of that quilt because it's amazing. It, it, the, the quilting designs came out exactly right. I learned, you know, from my lesson of don't leave question marks and applied that to shadow self. And that quilt was so much easier and quick to finish. So when I came back to my cup runneth over, it was so much easier and quick to finish. So what I did was I ripped, I had quilted a good chunk of the quilting design behind the goddess. So I pulled out my seam ripper and I ripped it all out. Just said, nope, that's not gonna work. Let's start over again. And I drew in the landscape behind her. And landscapes have started coming up in a lot of my quilts. And I have been thinking a lot about that, why that's a recurring theme, why that's a recurring motif in my quilts, they usually, are filling in the background these days or not, if not a significant part of the design. And I think a lot of that has to do with what I truly believe and that is that you can create your life. You create the landscape of your world, whether it is how you live, where you work, what your schedule is, how much time you have to spend with your family, all that kind of stuff. I truly believe you make decisions on a daily basis to make that happen, right? but you also have control over your mental landscape and what you believe and what you think and what you focus on and what you feel because our emotions create our feelings and our feelings create our emotions. Those two are tied together constantly. You can't have one without the other, you know? Uh, what we're thinking affects that. Our thoughts, if I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I suck, I'm terrible, I'm gonna feel bad, I'm gonna feel awful. So our thoughts and our emotions are tied in a constant loop and we have control over that. That landscape, we are creating and building that and fostering that and you know, laying out those rolling hills or we're creating jagged mountain peaks, whatever you wanna think about it, we're creating that on a daily basis. And it's in the decisions that we make, it's in the thoughts that we allow to run roughshod through our heads you know, it's all of that. So add it in the landscape. Uh, this design, uh, left turn, right turn is one of my favorites. 
And I feel like it's one of the perfect designs for this background because it almost forms a, um, a, it's like a boxy blocky texture and it fills in really nicely, but it's very uh, regular. You never really know what you're gonna get. And I like that because you really never know what you're gonna get. So I think the lesson there is just to be grateful for what you have, you know, that even the design is unexpected. You don't know what that texture is going to look like, but as long as you're grateful for it, it's going to end up working out. And that's helping you foster that feeling that this quilt is all about, and that's thankfulness and gratitude. The sky section, I admit I got in my way a little bit with that, because for years and years and years, I've been stitching a design called McTavishing. Well, not years and years. It was in 2008, <laughs> so two years before, I learned McTavishing and I loved Karen McTavish's design. And you can find a tutorial that I've stitched and, and taught it at leahday.com slash McTavishing. Uh, so I love that design, but I started to get in my own way with it and think, oh, well, I've done that so much. You know, that's my favorite design. I love it. It's my favorite, but I need to not do my favorite anymore. You know, it's kind of the same reason that a lot of people say, oh, I can't just stipple something anymore. You know, we start to have this judgment come in to our decision making. Like, oh, I can't use that. I need to go try something new. And that's good, but I'd already challenged myself more than enough through this quilt, right? So would she be better if she had McTavishing in the sky section rather than Snake Paisley? That's debatable. I look at it and I love it. But I look at that section and go, huh, you know, maybe that would have been made better if I'd made a different choice. And I now catch myself. I watch out for that. You know, why am I making this design choice? Am I picking this because I really think that texture will be best? Or am I picking this because of some other reason? You know, I'm very careful about that now. And that is a reminder. It's a reminder to watch out for that kind of thing. Uh, and uh, there's a great book, Ego is the Enemy. I know. <laughs> Read that on the bus or the train. <laughs> You'll scare all the people around you. But it's actually a really, really excellent book. And it's a great book to listen to. It's an excellent audio book. Uh, and it's a reminder that um, ego is the enemy, you know, to, to have an open heart with yourself and not feel like everything has to be yours. Uh, everything has to be, you know, and, you know, per perfect, you know, perfect, made by you, all yours, all that kind of good stuff. So that was a little bit of that lesson already starting to play through years before I read that book. But I look at it now and that's what I take from it. And there's lots of lessons within this quilt. You know, lots of things that when I look at this really make me very thankful that I made it and also very respectful of the girl that I was when I did. Now, I was 27, but in a lot of ways, I was still very much just learning, you know, getting my feet underneath me and trying to answer those questions and work through my stuff with fabric and thread. <laughs> and, you know, in a lot of ways, it worked really, really well. In a lot of other ways, it was a struggle and it was challenging, but I love that I took on that challenge. So I hope that you enjoyed hearing the story about my cup runneth over, this goddess quilt. Uh, I do have plans to offer my goddess quilts in more ways. Uh, just recently added the um, phone stand. This is another goddess quilt. Uh, with Release Your Light in the center. So yes, I have lots of plans of sharing um, this imagery in other ways. And if you have suggestions, please let me know. Uh, and she has been used for, you know, by other businesses. Uh, and so most recently a church contacted me and wanted to use this image on their bulletin. The answer is always yes, just contact me and, uh, and let me know what you have in mind and we'll work something out. I wanted to end with one last thing, and it is a, um, a gratitude practice. If you're feeling like that's a challenge to tap into that emotion of thankfulness and just bone deep gratitude of all the amazing things that we have, and I don't care what country you live in, 
uh, you know, where you came from, what family you have. There are so many things that we have to be grateful for. And I believe most recently developing this gratitude practice has made me a significantly happier person. Uh, so that's why I want to share it with you. So um, this is a chain of beads. It can be any length that you want, but um, if you are going with the traditional uh, meditation practice, then an agrappa mala is 108 beads with a nice big ninth bead, uh, 109th bead on the end. Um, if you want to count them, that's fine. Any chain of beads will do. Uh, I particularly like this one. I bought it when I was in Denver once uh, and it's amethyst, but you know, again, any kind of stone, don't get too attached to making the necklace perfect. It's just meant to be a chain of beads. Uh, so basically there's enough, there's a little bit of slack in the chain so you can move the beads. So um, when I'm going to sleep at night, and this is such a relaxing practice, I've got to say this, if I'm feeling stressed out or worried or you know something's on my mind, all I have to do is pick this up and start sliding the beads. And it's like, it just instantly puts me to sleep. And that's okay. Don't feel pressure to go through the entire thing. But basically as you hold it, Slide one bead over at a time and just think of something that you're thankful for. I'm so thankful for my family. I'm so thankful for Josh. I'm so thankful for James. I'm so thankful for my dad. It can also be things. And please don't overthink this. I am giving you permission to be thankful for the smallest and most petty things. I am thankful for my pillow that I sleep on at night. I'm thankful for the quilt on my bed because Sometimes we need to focus on the smallest thing right next to us that's giving us comfort right then. And we don't need to be making wild sweeping, I'm so thankful for the sun. And you know, I mean, you can make this really complicated. <laughs> you can get in your own way or you can keep it really simple. So I keep it very simple and I don't question or judge or cast rules over the things that I'm thankful for. So yes, I am thankful for my air conditioning and I'm thankful for my carpets, <laughs> you know, things like that. Because, you know, that when you are thankful for every little thing, then it's even easier to be thankful for the big things too. So I hope that you will, and you know, I encourage you to make a gratitude necklace. I think they're wonderful and I find it very relaxing. And sometimes I make it through the entire necklace and sometimes most of the time I'd say I fall asleep before I do, and that's okay too. Um, I know that I wake up the next morning feeling happier and more tapped into that, just how lucky we all are to have this amazing life, to live and do what we want, to build a business if we want to, to make beautiful quilts, you know, all of that you know, every single little thing is a reason to be thankful. So I encourage you to give this a try, make a necklace if you like, uh, and use it. You know, this is uh, something that I try and do every evening, especially if I'm feeling, you know, frazzled or stressed out or worried about something, then I can pick this up. And because I've tapped into that feeling and that emotion so many times, just holding it will sometimes calm me down. But then as soon as I start moving the beads and thinking of the things that I'm grateful for and just saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, that's sometimes enough. And I really do believe, I know it sounds silly, but I really do believe that doing something like this, cultivating this practice of gratitude will make you a happier person because it's not, it could never be a bad thing <laughs> to simply say thank you you know, for all of the little things and all of the big things in our lives. And we are so amazingly lucky for all of the things that we have. Again, no matter what country you live in, no matter what you do for a living, no matter the people in your lives, there is something always to be grateful for. So that's it for this story. I really hope that you enjoyed learning more about my cuff when it's over. You can find close up detail images of the quilting and uh, the fusible applique and all that good stuff, as well as a video that I made back in 2010, <laughs> which is not all that great, but hey, you know, that's where I was at at the time. So uh, find all of that at leahday.com gratitude. 
Uh, and that is absolutely the emotion that I am leaving the day with. I feel filled up to the brim with gratitude and I am so thankful that you were here listening to this episode and I am so thankful to be able to share it with you. So again, learn more, check out my cup runneth over at leahday.com slash gratitude. Until next time, let's go quilt. <laughs>